What's a secret that could tear your entire family apart? You slash smartest idiot responded. My sister and father both did ancestry DNA testing. Found some new relatives because my dad was adopted. When I mentioned I would do it a well my mother got very defensive and outright mad demanding I swear I won't do it. I don't look anything like my dad. Gonna be a wild Christmas this year when I get the results back of my test I did behind everyone's back. Update, I'll update when results come back in a month or so or longer. I don't know how long it takes. This blew up crazy. Update number two. He's my real dad. We are just very different people both mentally and physically. At least now I know. Thanks to all for hanging in there and caring. Carry on internet. You slash deleted responded. My cousin, 26, killed himself because he was fucking his mom. Or, his mom was fucking him. My aunt was a women's track coach at a major university. Always indulged unattainable athletic goals to my cousin i.e. will get you into the football program, at a specialized position, as a walk-on. And continued to encourage this delusion, after his college career ended, at a lower level college. My cousin was somewhat, crazy, but a sweet guy with a big personality. We grew up together as a couple of only childs, so like brothers. Even though he lived in the northeast and I in the south. I miss him terribly. My aunt, by marriage, was divorced from my uncle, and just one of those neurotic and odd people. The last time I saw him at her vacation house, a million dollar property, coaching pays well, he was acting weird, and to my surprise, really into drinking, drugs, and strip clubs. As we were pre-partying, his mom, an extremely unsexy person, joins in, dancing all gross. I start to get weirded out. When we returned home and go to pass out, she comes in his room, remember, M, 26, and starts cuddling and smooching on my cousin. As I realized in WTF, I left the room to sleep on the couch. I was thinking about it in the morning like WTF. Said goodbyes and GTF out of there. He killed himself a couple months later. Mom gets all Jesus Jesus, God God with the funeral and everything. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one in the world who witnessed the behavior. His suicide caught everyone completely by surprise and was gut-wrenching. I wonder if anyone, friends of his, or family of mine will read this and know who TF I'm talking about. Like I said, I may be the only one to speculate this. Edit, my family is mostly torn apart anyway, but it's a secret nonetheless. You slash Thelsrange responded. My grandma is absolutely the alpha in the relationship between my grandparents. They had three sons, and their oldest being my uncle named Paul. There are very few moments that we get to talk to my grandfather alone due to my grandma always speaking over him and for him. This one time my grandma was in the hospital due to a recent surgery. Grandpa was talking to us in the hallway and so we asked how did they choose the names of our dad, middle child. He explained why, but then told us a secret about how he came up naming their first son. When he just moved to California he fell in love with this one girl, and while their relationship didn't work out he still had a piece of him that still loved her. Her last name was, Paul, and he liked that name so he named his firstborn son after her and never told my grandma about it. You slash gob 311 responded. Not going to break apart the family, but I'm curious about what happens to family gatherings once my grandma passes away. She's 94 and in pretty good health for her age. She's also one of the most petty and mean-spirited women I've ever met. I'm curious what comes out when her health starts spiraling. There's a very thinly veiled hatred of my mother and both my aunts. One has a child from a previous marriage that has been cut out of the will, which has been causing problems for the last two decades, Christmas gifts are always cash and he's been getting mega shafted. One year a few years ago me, my sister and bio cousin all got $1,000, he got $1, he's never invited on vacations but my aunt and uncle are, etc. My other aunt is a bit of an alcoholic when my grandma is around, and only when she's around, and is definitely not afraid to speak her mind. Meanwhile all this shit means I see the extended family maybe once a year and my cousins I was close with growing up are now rather distant, although that's on me because I'm terrible at communicating and reaching out to anyone. You slash Elstag responded. I was sexually abused by a family member when I was 6. I'm 37 now. Until a couple of weeks ago, I had never told a soul and had no plan to. I told my therapist and it has helped a lot. My family doesn't know, though the person who did it certainly does and we have a very small family. I've been constantly conflicted about opening this topic for discussion. I worry it would rip my family apart and leave me isolated. Asterisk edit to add this is easily the most public I've ever been sharing this information and I did so hesitantly. It's been a rough burden to bear and I constantly wonder how much of who I am has been shaped and formed by holding this inside, trying to be strong. I thank you all for the kind words and support. You slash violet underscore the underscore goblin responded. My grandpa molested his children. 
This is known by my grandma, who knew and did nothing, my mom and her siblings. Nobody acknowledges it and acts like one big happy family. The secret though is that back in September, the bits and pieces of what felt like dreams just floating in the back of my mind fell into place and I now realize they're hazy memories that allude to me also being sexually abused too. I've only shared this with my partner, but part of me wants to go scorch earth and share it publicly because families think silence protects their image and all it does is protect the predator and make more victims. My anger also wants my mother to realize she just did what her mom did to her, not protecting her daughters. You slash pepperoni underscore dog fart responded. Here's the shittiest comment in this thread. I don't think there's a horror big enough to tear some families apart. Three of my uncle's gang raped one of my aunts when they were all kids. My grandmother knew this happened and made her own daughter keep it a secret, forbade her from even telling her own father, you know, because boys will be boys and it was the 1970s and those boys had futures. It came out a few years after grandpa passed on, the family just completely shrugged it off like, yeah, well, water under the bridge. You slash boo boo kitty f ck21 responded. A certain family member used to get drunk and corner me, from the age of about 10. Never actually went all the way, but the innuendos and even outright groping a few times in front of people really did a number on me. The last time it happened was earlier this year, with no groping but contact and heavy innuendo. This person has supposedly stopped drinking due to health reasons, but I truly do fear one day, I won't be able to talk my way out of it and will be full on raped. Never told much of anyone in the family because I didn't think they believed me or would blame me. The few family members I did tell or who saw concerning behavior slash interactions turned a blind eye and made excuses for this person, making me feel like I was overreacting or victimizing myself. My partner is aware and is incredibly supportive and protective. There was always a lead up to it getting on the level of inappropriate it was, so I always knew when it was time to try to remove myself from the situation. But it was never completely avoidable due to not wanting to sacrifice time with my siblings and mother. You slash smooth 420 responded. It's about tearing the family apart but I'm pretty sure my estranged older half-brother, 20 years older than me, and his daughter tried to wrangle me into some sort of scam. They had both recently gotten out of state prison after doing short stints for drugs. While they were in the slammer my dad's mom passed away. My dad had already passed and he was an only child. My grandma had like three different life insurance policies that were all paid out according to her wishes, that I know of. Well my dad's will was never legally executed and therefore my brother couldn't get any info slash payment from my grandma's will slash life insurance since my dad wasn't named in them since he had passed. I think they were trying to sue one of the insurance policies stating that the policy hadn't been paid out. Well they needed my signature to execute my dad's will since I'm named as a child in it so they could have the legal basis to sue. What they didn't anticipate was that I worked for my local sheriff's office at the time. I listened to their bullshit ass dumb inmate story then called the law firm they had. Hired to make all of this happen. His story was stupid AF too. So I got all the info I needed then started making calls. I called the insurance company and the lady I talked to was Sue Nice. She gave me a few well-timed hints and suggestions on who I should call next and told me what she could legally tell me about my grandmother's policy. Made some more phone calls then called my brother back to get his story again, which still didn't make sense so I told him what all I had found out and they dropped the whole matter all of a sudden. You slash stoned underscore Brad responded. Not so much a secret as much as everyone in my family choosing to ignore the obvious. My grandparents recently passed away, grandmother about two years ago, grandfather less than a year later. When we were putting together the obituary, we noticed that the time span between when they were married and when my mother was born was considerably less than nine months. The younger generations obviously don't care, but my parents, aunts, uncles, etc. refused to acknowledge it, and even went as far as changing their date of marriage in the newspaper obituary. You slash deleted responded. While my grandparents absolutely love their children equally and did everything they can to support them and help them build better lives, they also have zero chill with acting on who they believe actually has their shit together when it comes down to estate and legal matters. My parent is the third child in their family and they are the executor of the will and estate, not the oldest child. One of their older siblings still lives in their childhood home with my grandparents, both helping and aggravating them in the day-to-day, -day, and my grandparents were very clear that after they die they are not giving the house to anyone in part because they want the sale money to go to their kids, but also because they want to force their child still living at home to move on with their life. My parent was told by their parents to evict their brother. It's going to be a wild fucking ride if my uncle decides he's entitled to stay. You slash straight, B9783 responded. That nobody likes my brother-in-law. It would ruin the relationship with my sister and my niece and nephew, which we would all hate. My brother-in-law has weird phases, sometimes he is nice, sometimes the worst person to be around. He picked a fight with the husband of my cousin on the birthday party of my dad, with swearing and raising his voice, for a minor thing, in front of his small kids. 
He and his parents made the life of my other cousin a living hell for a year when his parents let him move in an apartment of theirs and were disturbing him daily about every little thing he did, like opening a window, showering, to long, etc. My bill also makes derogatory comments to my parents and me and my husband as jokes. We are all kinda looking over those instances because we know once we say something, it will make my sister's life a literally hell. She doesn't know we don't like him. She is a family-loving and fantastic person but she is really blind when it comes to him. I know she would never divorce him even when he would turn against us and would make her cut contact. You slash daddy horse responded. It's a secret that I actually make music. I will take it to my grave for my girlfriend's family. They're all southern slash midwest, country, god is good type people. They're sweet, friendly, and they love me. The fact that I keep the lights on with some deep voice grungy rap would make them one, question if I am a Christian, and LVE avoided that conversation for well over a year, and two, they assume all career musicians are rich beyond belief. I give my producers and mastering techs their very fair share to make sure they eat good, and as a result I live comfortable but I'm not rolling around in a Maybach living in a mansion like how they imagine every musician is, and I know they'd be looking for their handouts. There is a lot of expenses when you're unsigned. You slash Anton underscore Owl responded. My grandfather divorced his wife at the age of 76 and then started dating his cousin, who is 12 years younger than him. The cousin then became hated by the whole family because it was obvious that she was only in for the money. He died five years later. She was at his funeral and left pretty early, but surprisingly she didn't get a cent. My grandmother probably had narcissistic personality disorder, which she passed on to my mother. My mother never got over her traumatic childhood and abused me until I moved out at 18. It's a running joke in the family that my grandmother hit my father regularly. She once tried to hit him, he ducked and she broke her hand on the table. To this day she has problems with her hand. If anyone talks about one of the above they are shut down immediately. You slash Leech Al Jolson responded. My girlfriend, the love of my life, caught COVID from me and it killed her. We got sick right before the vaccines rolled out. My family knows hers doesn't. Her family is my family too though. It'll be three years in February and there's no point in revealing this to them. It would destroy her parents. They tell me they see their daughter when they see me. She had lymphoma for almost two years and I lived with them while I was taking care of her. We've always been close. It eats at me though. Every moment I've shared with them and the rest of her family grieving it's in the back of my head that I'm the reason for our pain. I'm not afraid of being told to never come back, to never see them again. I just don't want to hurt them any more than I already have. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you might enjoy the rest of my content. Check it out.